holes. Uh, personally, I don't believe in black holes. I don't think they exist. Right. Uh, you have what you do have are very massive uh, stars, which are have ejected completely their atmosphere, and they're very dense, uh, sort of. Uh, if you want an analogy to like kryptonite or something, <laughs> right. um, it's what white dwarfs are made out of. We mm -hmm. where they talk about uh, one cubic centimeter weighs one ton, or uh, like neutron stars, one cubic centimeter would weigh thousand tons or million tons. So it's very uh, greatly compacted material, um, and it is generating not only matter but energy. And eventually, it will go through an explosive phase. It has to do with the gravity potential in the theory I've developed called subquantum kinetics. Um, it's a physics theory. Um, it predicts that uh, as an object like that in the core of the galaxy, as its gravity well deepens. In other words, if it's generating more and more matter, its gravity well is going to get deeper and deeper over centuries of time. Mm. Um, that As that happens, it accelerates the process of matter and energy generation. So eventually, it'll come to a point where it's generating so much energy that it becomes unstable, and it will go into the active phase. And uh, when it goes active, it can be Suddenly, it can jump uh, a million fold yeah. in terms of how much energy it's putting out, <laughs> and and that's what generates what I call a super wave because that suddenly that huge jump of energy goes out like a wave, traveling to speed of light, so, and it sweeps the whole galaxy. So uh, again, uh, this could mean that this have already happened at the center of the galaxy, just that we haven't actually seen the, the we haven't seen the outcome of this yet. Right. Yeah. And, how, how and that's a dangerous thing. It travels uh, speed of light and sort of takes you by surprise when yes. you see it. It's already here. Exactly. And, and, and you mentioned this as a way of a, a continuous creation, that this is, uh, I'd reckon from your perspective then, that this is part of, of a, cre a creation cycle that uh, if we, because if we take that into account with your other work on uh, decoding the message of the pulsars intelligent communication from the galaxy um, then it's like it's a plan behind this it's a, it's a purpose behind this but how do you how do you reckon that it also coincides with a lot of extinction events obviously that is happening on on planets at the same time throughout the solar system it's like is is that a, a natural form of upgrade, do you think, in one way, that it's eradicating certain species and so forth that might not, um, they're not supposed to continue, if I put it that way? Humanity is still here, obviously, so we have managed to live through it, but could this kill us off, do you think, as well? Well, um, actually, it's not the superwaves themselves that are the worst. It's the sun that ends up having the worst effect. Uh, what the superwaves do, these cosmic ray volleys, is they push the cosmic dust into the solar system. And that creates a dirty environment around us here. And uh, it will, like, create a cocoon around the sun. And so whereas normally the sun's energy can flow out freely, mm. now with the dust, it reflects it back on the sun. The sun uh, gets more active, like junk falls onto the surface. Like today we see every time a comet falls into the sun, the sun starts getting active with flares yes. or rebels. So with huge amounts, and I'm talking about uh, maybe a thousand times more dust falling onto the sun, uh, and even like uh, maybe a million or a hundred million times more dust particles in space, than we see now to the point where you wouldn't see the stars any longer. I mean, it would be that bad. Um, you'd actually see a reflection of the sun in the direction of space opposite to the sun. It would be so dense at times. <laughs> so this uh, creates a totally different environment, and the sun goes into a, uh, a more active state, which we see in other stars, which are called T. Tauri stars. And so we see this going on out there, in other star systems, and um, and it's really the sun that can have lethal effects on the Earth, because some of these flares, which are unlike anything we've seen today, uh, like one I've studied that killed the um, the large animals at the end of the ice age. Mm -hmm. This happened about uh, twelve thousand nine hundred years ago. 
um, I've done some work uh, on records and have found a time when there was a big jump in carbon-14, uh, along with other things like brilliant 10 And uh, from these, you can sort of recreate how big a solar flare would that have had to be, and you come up with, with something that was like about 100 times greater than what we see today. Hmm. And um, something like that could actually have overpowered the Earth's magnetic field and actually contacted the atmosphere. And um, <clears throat> if you do the calculations, you, you come up with lethal uh, levels of radiation at the Earth's surface. So any animal or human being that was out unprotected would, would have died within a matter of weeks. Yeah, you know. yeah. <clears throat> and and uh, what did you reckon the most of the... Do you think that human beings that were alive at the last extinction of event knew of this uh, in advance as well, and they had the, the preparation time to go maybe underground? Uh, there's mythological stories about this as well, of course, but w okay. what do you think? <clears throat> I do. There's a lot of myths. I have included them in my book, in Earth Under Fire. Uh, just like the flood myths, there's myths about the burning of the Earth and how they took refuge in caves. So this indicates they had some advanced warning. Uh, they could see the sun was uh, getting hotter, more active, and um, maybe even had some indication that uh, from auroras, aurora borealises, and so on, that um, something was big was coming yeah and um so you you find like oh, the, the other thing is it actually triggered forest fires widespread and we find evidence of the smoke in the ice core record uh very close to where this um this uh, very large solar flare event happened um scientists call them solar proton events um and you find a, a lot of smoke type uh, material in the ice close to that time. <clears throat> so it seems what was happening was over a period of years, the sun was actually itself getting hotter mm. and dried up vegetation and <clears throat> uh, made it easier for it to catch fire. Mm. Um, so that plus the cosmic rays themselves, the cosmic rays could have actually carbonized, turned wood to charcoal. Um, they were that intense. Uh, That's incredible, and and so, what what would be the progression of this if it if it happened to us today? Obviously, we would if we go through it fairly simply or fairly uh, crass in that sense. Would we see like a, possibly a light first? Do you think in terms of the fact that this super wave is coming through, and then we would have the dust that as you mentioned, and then we would have uh, I guess then a, a kind of an encasing I've heard as well of the sun with this dust, and that is what you mentioned that that makes it. Uh, ramp up in its activity. Uh, right. That can take uh, many decades, maybe even hundreds of years to really? get the sun up to that level. Wow. Uh, but the, the super wave itself could take us by surprise, and the, the leading edge could be pretty dangerous. You know, the, because at the forefront, you're getting the, most, uh, the highest energy particles. Uh, the lower energy ones tend to lag behind and sort of get weeded out uh, whereas the the forefront, because like a super wave can last anywhere from maybe 20 years to thousands of years. In other words, one that was uh, spanning a period of very long activity, like 4,000 years at the end of the Ice Age. Uh, but the very forefront um, could create be like a gamma ray burst effect. So uh, you'd want to stay indoors. <laughs> well, that, Definitely. I mean, how, how? Because this is amazing to me. Because I, I, in one sense, to me, it feels when I look into the uh, the record of the ancient people that, the, yes, they talked about obviously extinction events and, and major cataclysm. It seems like, but to me, it seems like the, these were things that lasted maybe for a decade or two in that sense. But but the the time scale you're talking about here is immense. How, I mean, how would humanity survive something like this if there's uh, no other animals maybe around to eat or vegetation is sparse and, and uh, do you have any ideas about that? How the heck did they survive this? Well, the the worst uh, thing would be been the solar event um, and for sure, like you see a lot of carbonized material